Good morning, everyone. This is Patrick Russell, Blue Jay, class of 89, and this is the We Want More vodcast. Never has shown any adverse effects. Harrison with it. Big shot. Scores! Kyle Harrison goes high. That's it. It's over. Josh Hawkins has won his ninth national championship. Pete, good morning to you. And um, congratulations on a terrific win versus the Wahoos last Saturday at UVA. Terrific game. Thank you. Glad to be here. Quickly, as a quick interjection to this vodcast. We're six episodes in. The intention was to provide this to alums, also fans, but to alums as sort of a wrap up to the previous weekend's game. So instead of sort of a impersonal stale email, it's nice to do this person to person. Always encourage any of our alums to ask the questions that want to be asked. So Pete, Great game at Clockner, up and down, fantastic game, fantastic broadcasting, by the way, beautiful day. Uh, thoughts on the game against Virginia? Uh, it was up and down. It was wild. Um, you know, it was an intense game. I think it had, uh, you know, a little bit more than, than an early March, you know, feel to it. Um, I thought it was two good teams playing at a pretty good level. Uh, you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't obviously perfect by any means, but, you know, our, our guys just, uh, you know, really worked their butts off throughout the week, you know, coaches, uh, developed, a, I thought a really, um, a really quality game plan guys, you know, worked and, and executed well, um, you know, we made enough plays, uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, to separate the score, um, you know, a couple clutch, really clutch plays, um, some big saves, timely face-offs. Um, you know, outground balled them, which is, you know, a feat in itself doing against Virginia. Um, seems like they they win that that statistical category every game, every year. Um, but, uh, you know, just just proud of the effort. I thought it was a, it was a great all around game. It was an exciting game. Um, you know, it was, a, you know, good test for us to just, uh, you know, see what what, you know, some of the best teams in the country, uh, you know, look like. I think Virginia is as good as there is. And, uh, um, you know, just, you know, put it in the bank and, and on to the next one. So. You know, Pete, one of the things that I was impressed with and many others have commented is that was a big game and we had not beaten Virginia in a while and it's tough to play at Clockner, truly becoming one of the other great sites for lacrosse games. Uh, really proud of the demeanor in which you and the team handled that win. You know, it wasn't like UMBC upsetting Virginia as a 16 seed versus a one seed in basketball. It was, hey, we got the job done and we're on to the next game uh the temperature of the team after that victory can you talk a little bit about that yeah I think a lot of the you know the sentiments that you just shared were were echoed by the team you know throughout the week and and uh and going in you know I don't I don't think it was a um you know an unexpected or or upset win or anything like that I mean it was you know some a couple really good teams you know battling it out um I thought, you know, our guys handled it the right way. I thought they, you know, had a good focus and, uh, you know, there was obviously some motivation. It's a rivalry. It's a, uh, it's, you know, it's a team we haven't beaten in a few years. We, you know, had a tough day there a couple of years ago. I think there was just a lot of that, um, you know, emotion baked into it, but to stay focused on, uh, you know, just executing and being disciplined where we can, um, you know, we still followed too many times. We've just got to turn that corner, but, um, uh, you know, getting out of there with a win and, and, and sharing the right sentiment that, you know, it's, it's on to the next because we have right. another, you know, big week, you know, seemingly every week. Yeah. So Pete, you know, Blue Jay fans, even in great victories, we always find the things that we want to nitpick at or point at. Is there one or two things in the game that you felt like gee, we really need to sort of improve on, uh, we need to sort of pick that up the next game. Sure. Um, I mean, the, probably the blatant one is, is transition or substitution stuff. Um, okay. you know, our, our settled defense is, is doing pretty well right now that we've got to get there as consistently as we can. I don't think this is, I'm not telling any stories, anything. 
um, you know, transition is, is a tough place to be against, against Virginia. Um, and, and consistently, you know, you don't want to give them advantages. They just live there and, and they're, you know, kind of jokingly, they're almost better playing offense where they drop the ball and then pick it back up again, because they just play so fast. They play so well off the ground. They're so aggressive. Um, and, and they catch you and, you know, sometimes you're not all the way sorted out in those situations where you feel like you might be. And we got scored on a couple of times, like five on five. Right. that we just we felt like we were still in transition so we were in you know in, in an odd man setup and we were we were even we just didn't we didn't recognize quickly so i think that's probably a yeah. uh the, the the most immediate answer i give you is we've got to find ways to like sort those things out and get to a settled defense right more effectively more efficiently um because we play in those situations better and, and I'm, I'm not again not giving away secrets that's mo most teams are, are like that anyway but there are some that that would prefer to just play in in a little bit more of a chaotic style it's just sure. um just kind of how how it suits you right i was not going to say it's a rhetorical question but it ended up being a rhetorical question because my my comment would have been you know i noticed we had a couple of substitution mm -hmm. uh, illegal procedures uh, but all those things can get worked out. You know, it's interesting too. Noon's the goal, the goalie. He's very good at making a mm -hmm. save and throwing it to the midfield line. He's not even yes. throwing it to a fast break guy at the restraining line. Mm -hmm. He's throwing it to the 50 yard line and someone's there to catch it. So you have to be careful for that. One other thing that I noticed too, in the first half, uh, Virginia lives on that skip pass. And when I say skip pass, I mean, not one player skip, but like you know, uh, like, um, you know, we have uh, Schellenberger throwing across three guys across the field to, you know, to any of his attackmen, um, you know, looking at maybe not knocking down a couple of those cross field passes. And then in the second half, we kind of did that. We actually yeah, a little bit better. We intercepted a few passes. Yeah, he's I, I, I can't say enough about Connor Schellenberger and the, and the stress level he puts on you as a as a coach, I'm sure as a player as well, like, you know, managing his ability and his threat level to get to the goal and generate his own offense and his own shots. But he is such an extraordinary passer and every pass just hits a guy in the stick and you give him the tiniest of windows and he, and he fits it in there. And so, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a big responsibility for the defense um, to, to cover him and, and to cover the off ball guys as well. And the way you know, coach runs that system like they're not so matchup oriented that, you know, we're going to help where we have to help. So he was dodging every defenseman we had. He was dodging, dodging short sticks. He had an offensive midfielder a couple of times. Like you just can't you can't expect Scott. He's just going to be on him the whole day. So yeah. um, it's it's a lot. But, you know, the plays like that, like the second you you step through the middle to to help to him, um, he finds that that guy on the other side and, and yeah. you know, throws a 30 yard pass like he was handing it to him. Right. And in the impressive. second half, I noticed our defensemen were really good at sort of actually picking off a couple of passes and uh, creating mm -hmm. pass breaks, which is always great. Yeah. One last technical question again, and this is kind of coming from like an old, old school guy. Defenses today, you know, and I have a son who plays division three in college, you know, we see a lot of slide fast, recover quickly. Um, and in the old days, many of us might have thought, hey, I'm not really going to go until I think my teammate is getting beat. Um, how do we sort of incorporate our defense? Are we sort of a slide quick, recover quick defense or you know, um, describe it? I mean, there's going to be two sides to probably every answer that that that's going to be a yes. And a no. I depends think on the matchup. It, it depends on the situation. I mean, certain teams are going to go into games just with a straight up intention to not slide on purpose because they want to they want to change the way you play. I don't think we're going to put ourselves in that situation, but most of what we're doing is built off of, you know, challenging the ball and, 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 and the way we play the ball kind of sets up everything we do behind it. So if we don't play the ball effectively, it makes it very difficult to defend behind it. But if we do play it properly, whether you get beat or not, we can defend behind it. And so I think that, that, that point is, uh, you know, is, is well made by you that, that, you know, it's, it's part of a, a game plan that, that needs to all fit together that if we have to slide, we have to slide. We got to recover quickly. Even some of those, like we slid and recovered and did everything, but they still moved the ball faster than we got there. And, you know, you, you see against a high level team like that, like you got to bump all the way through quick enough because the guy on the backside will shoot the ball from 12 yards every time. And he hits a very accurate shot at that point. So, um, you know, sometimes we're just tested to even recover quicker than we are. Right. And I think for the most part, we do okay at it, but right. it'd be better. Yeah. 
Uh, interesting um, notice by the broadcasters, including Quick Kesnich, our first midfield unit, you know, Collison and Peshko. Um, I think they said hat tricks. They had, they had four tricks. each. Yeah, four and one each. Yeah, they had five yeah. points each and and twelve points on that first midfield line because Dylan had a couple assists as well. Yeah, and it hasn't been. There was some observation about ha that hasn't happened since the great Mike, the Hammer O'Neill in '77. Oh. So, yeah, I saw something from um, uh, Ernie sent something the other day about yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, having two midfielders in the same game with four goals, it was uh, yes, exactly. You're going to test me to now find it because we, we're going to have to get that factoid on the. Uh, that's okay on the, uh, on the call because here. um I had a little misstep last week when I couldn't remember Doyle Smith Cup <laughs> and it was great yeah, to yeah. get that uh it was really a wonderful uh, experience to see the team rally around that sort of rivalry trophy uh really well done and I thought it was really great to see the team with that you know we talk about well how many games are rivalry games for Hopkins and there's a bunch huh but all the rivalries are unique in their own way, right? The rivalry with Virginia is unique versus the rivalry with Syracuse, which is different than the rivalry with Maryland, but they are great rivalries. Yeah, absolutely. They're all a little bit different, but um, yeah, I agree. I mean, they're, they're, um, they're all a challenge in their own way and, and they, they carry emotion they carry history and tradition. And, you know, this, you know, Virginia was going back hundred years, hundred plus years. And, uh, but at the end of the day, like, you know, it's a long season. We got, uh, you know, over a dozen games on the regular season schedule. And, you know, it seems like each week we're, we're building up for, for a big one. So, you know, try not to overstate what we're, sure. what we're dealing with, you know, just make sure guys are focused on, uh, on executing and, and probably more than anything, focusing on us and not, not our opponent and not the, not the, not the history, not the tradition, not the emotion right. or the rivalry. It's really just, you know, find the best version of us on game day. And that's, that's the most important thing. Understood completely. And well said. So I always like to talk about one or two players, uh, in particular, one first topic of two, um, Quentin Kilrain and his play, very mature for a first year player, uh, very poised. Tell us a little bit about Quentin and his play and how he's evolved over the season. You know, we're now six games, you know, into the season, how he's evolved. Um yeah, I mean, great observation. That's that's probably as well said as it could be. I mean, for a freshman, um, he makes mature plays. He's got a composure on the field. Um, you know, he's he's got a skill set, athleticism, matchups well. Um, you know, and he's one of those guys you don't have to tell things to a million times. He he just kind of understands the the concept of what you're uh, what you're instructing. Um, you know, he's he's working well with the defense. Starting to you know, I see a voice come out and start to have a little bit more of a of a presence than. Um, you know, early on where he's still working his way through the freshman uh, learning curve of, you know, not screwing up is the most important thing. And, and you know, that doesn't really subside, but, you know, you get to you kind of come out of your shell and, and uh, you know, he's realizing that that we're relying on him and things like that. And so he's doing a great job in the clear. He's picking up ground balls. Um, I thought he handled his uh, his assignment really well last week. And uh, yeah, just again, for for a freshman, uh, you know, we're really proud of him and uh you know, we've, we've nominated him for freshman of the week awards. It's just really hard for defensive right. players. It basically goes to starting attack. Then, so. Right. Right. Understood. A little bit like the Heisman trophy award. Sure. Um, second, second, your short stick D middies. I mean, there is a plethora of them and they all contribute really great to see. Yeah. We're, we've been playing a deep group for a while and we're going to continue doing it. Um, we like them all. Uh, you know, Casey McDermott's even, you know, kind of in a, a you know, a complimentary factor there as well, because he's mostly a wing guy and an offensive guy, but he can take some D shifts as well. So, right. Yeah, well, you, know, like, you there. answered my question because I was going to say to you, you know, in the old days when you had two way middies, I guess Casey McDermott would be the closest thing that you have to a two way midi because he can play offense. I mean, we probably have other ones that we would if yeah. we were shorter staffed. I think, you know, some of the other guys, Peshko's actually really good on defense. Um, you know, some of the other guys, when they get back there can handle themselves, Grimes been doing a good job. I mean, it's, it, they're, they're experienced. They've been, they've been doing this for a few years and, you know, you start to learn the system, you know, we could probably use Brandon Avilas and, uh, Jackson Raposa was an offensive player for a couple of years. So there are some guys that could go two ways, but, uh, um, letting the guys specialize in what they're best at is, is, is probably, you know, helping us as much as anything right now. Right. And lastly, Stu Phillips, I noticed he appeared in EML. 
mm -hmm. uh, from British Columbia, Canadian. I imagine it's because of his finishing ability. Um, I noticed, I, I've noticed this a lot in lacrosse. Teams are using EMO specialists. So he's now on your extra man unit. Yeah, he's he's been in there for a few games. Um, yeah, he's and and he's he's more than a finisher. He's um, you know, he's played he's played before. Um, you know, he's he's always you know right there in the mix. Uh, you know, he's he's a very smart player. He scores a ton in box. Um, he uh, he comes out of the you know out of our midfield sometimes. He can fill in an attack. Um, you know, makes makes good decisions and uh, plays with his head up. So he's he fits into that EMO unit pretty well. Um, doing a good job helping us. Um, you know, keep going to keep attacking that and seeing if we can up the productivity. But they're doing well. Great. Great. Well, Pete, moving on. Uh, just uh, congratulations again. A lot of folks that I talked to said we showed grit. We were aggressive uh, when we got pushed. We pushed back, and uh, it was really just a great victory to see. So, congrats. And then we move on to Syracuse. Uh, moving on to Syracuse quickly for everyone who doesn't know, that game will actually be played in Charlotte, North Carolina, neutral site. It will be on ESPN at 6.30 or one of the ESPN apps, and then they'll tape delay it the next day on Sunday. Thoughts about Syracuse, one of the great, great rivalries. Sure. Yeah, we're yeah another rivalry week. We have uh... – um, going to be a, a tough battle. You know, there, there's, there's no doubt they've, um, you know, they've played uh, some, some really good teams really close, you know, they're two overtimes away from being undefeated. Um, and that's against, you know, two, two excellent top 10 teams. So, um, you know, they move the ball extremely well on offense. They're facing off well, they got, uh, you know, tough defensive system with some big boys down there. Um, excellent goalie. I mean, they, they've got all their bases covered. They're, they're very good. Um, it will be a challenge in every way. Uh, it sounds like they've gotten, you know, healthy again and, and some of their big pieces are back in the mix. And so, um, yeah, we head down on on Friday. It's a Saturday night tilt. Should be um, should be exciting. Great. Well, I'd be remiss in this podcast if I didn't mention just the great tradition of Hopkins playing Syracuse. I'm an 80s guy from, you know, the devastating loss in 83 when Syracuse came back in the national championship, when they were down by many, many goals to our dominance in 84 and 85, Brian Wood knocking the microphone off the goal, the great matchups with, you know, uh, the Nelson brothers and John D. Tommaso and the great goalie play from Larry Quinn moving all the way up to, you know, the 89 championship that we played in. Just a terrific rivalry. I think in the 80s, we always kind of thought of it as a defensive team versus a very offensive team. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the great Gate brothers. But then moving on, Charlie Lockwood and, you know, uh, the Powell brothers and uh, just all the great matchups we had in the game that Ryan Brown had several years ago where I think he may have scored eight or nine goals. Uh, just a great rivalry. And hopefully I, the players feel that this is a special game. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, this is always one, you know, like we said, there's there's a, a, a lot of, you know, big games on the schedule. There's a lot of rivalries, but, uh, you know, this one has its own place. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of tradition. I mean, I grew up in upstate New York, so right. I've, been, I've seen a ton of those those games you were just referring to. I've I've watched them on uh, on YouTube and I grew up, you know, seeing some of them. And, um, you know, so there's there's kind of a general awareness across the sport of uh, of this matchup over time. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think the guys will definitely get it. Um, we're looking forward to the event. We're actually doing a doubleheader with the women. They'll play right before us. Um, so the Hopkins uh, ladies are down there playing Stony Brook. And uh, it just a, it's it's a really neat all-around event. They've been doing it for right. a few years. A couple other games during the day, D2s, D3s, um, another D1 game. So it'll be cool. Yeah. So where do you think we need to match up with them? Like, I mean, we have to match up everywhere, but what what is mm -hmm. what worries you? What what do you think we need to focus on? Uh, I mean, the transition will worry me always, as long as we're, you know, getting back in, in transition and making sure that we're protecting our, our defensive end of the field the right way. Um, you know, the ground ball battle is going to be massive, especially with uh, how good they are on the draw. Um, so, you know, that that will dictate a lot of uh, of the pace of the game with with how those possessions are um, are filtering out. So. Um, you know, handling those things, making sure that we're, uh, you know, aware of, of situations and, and assignments and stuff like that. Excellent. Also, you have spring break coming up, I believe, correct? So uh, not till next week. So we okay. we come back from 
from the Syracuse game and, and it's Navy week and then um, spring break starts at the uh, after the Navy game. Right. Great, Pete. And I guess when we talk about rivalries in previous podcasts, you know, you know, Georgetown was sort of the beltway rivalry. And then you obviously have the in-state rivalry with Maryland. You have the Charles Street rivalry with uh, Loyola. This is sort of the, you know, who has the best fans? Who's the most sophisticated lacrosse area? Upstate New York, where the Syracuse fans are rabid and great. Much respect to them. Sure. Or are the Baltimore fans, you know, or you know, which one's the hotbed? Is that kind of is kind of the argument behind the Hopkins Syracuse rivalry, right? Well, Hopkins is the hotbed. We'll just leave yeah, it at that because yeah. you know, start putting regional affiliation on it. We got guys on our team from New York and they got right. guys on their team from Maryland and whatnot. So um yeah, I trust the Hopkins fans and their yeah. uh and their support for sure. Well, you know, it's funny because in the 70s and the 80s, you would never get an upstate person at Hopkins, you know, and fortunately no. the pipeline is coming. So we we yeah. appreciate it. We got a few of them. Yeah. Pete, I have to ask a question for fun. Go Two ahead. more questions. What are the bus trips like? What was the bus trip like home from Virginia? And this uh, is going to sound really crazy. Do you have a Do you have a common bus driver? Is there one bus driver that always takes care of you guys, or is it not someone? currently? Not 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 currently. We rotate a few, but we also uh, because of our travel party and uh, the amount of support staff that goes with us, sometimes we have to take two buses. Okay. Um, but uh, I mean, the bus rides home are always more fun because, you know, right. if, if well, if you're winning, if you're winning, the bus rides home are always more fun. Um, you know, they, they play a movie and uh, and screw around a little bit. But the uh, freshmen have to sing songs. Uh, no, we haven't done that. I don't I don't know. Right. I don't know what category that falls into anymore. So, we, right. we you know, we just let them uh, we just let them hang out. Some of them sleep, some of them do homework and uh, okay. watch a movie and, uh, you know, have yeah. some fun. Much different than in our day, but that's for a different vodka totally. on a different channel. <laughs> uh, lastly, I, I had to mention this because I'm all about the history of Hopkins across. And one of the things that I've mentioned to the players at Smokers is the little people that make Hopkins special, right? Not the coaches and the players, but people on staff, people who, you know, work in the equipment room, the bus drivers. Back in our day, we had a legendary gentleman named George Polder, Georgie, who was our ball boy. You guys ever thought about having a ball boy, a designated ball boy for the team, or is there one? There isn't, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm open to it if there's if there's applications. Right. Well, I'll have Ernie post a photo of Georgie in this podcast okay. when it's edited. But uh, I was just thinking, you know, the other day about all the great people that work for Hopkins, from equipment managers to trainers to bus drivers, all those people that make the program special. Yeah. Well, listen, have a great, safe trip to Charlotte. Good luck against Syracuse. Again, the game will be at 630 on the ESPN networks. A great rival, another great rivalry game. And thanks for joining us today. I know you're busy. For sure. Thanks for doing this. Excited about it. Thanks, Pete.